We're there at every turn. Good afternoon, and welcome to another segment of Blue Blood Bowling. Lighter side has been brought to you by Selsun Blue, recommended number one by doctors and pharmacists. When I played football, I crunched quarterbacks. But now I crunch these, JB's pigskins. The new pork rind still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Oh. How is my meatloaf? Oh. Excellent. That was meatloaf? Oh. I have the perfect remedy, Mom. Oh, I can't take Alka-Seltzer. This one's easy to take. Oh. Advanced formula Alka-Seltzer. It has 75% less sodium, a fresh lemony taste, and you can take it with just a little water. That tasted great. But it's not Alka-Seltzer. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. How's your heartburn with headache? Better. See? Are you two taking Alka-Seltzer? Oh, no, 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 no. Alka-Seltzer. New advanced formula. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's Alka-Seltzer. When I'm fighting dandruff, I want all the help I can get. So now I'm using extra strength Denerex with 39% more dandruff medicine. For my dandruff and itch, there's 39% more medicine in extra strength Denerex. For great looking hair, I can't get too much of a good thing. When I bite into a York peppermint patty, I get the sensation of cold, crisp mountain air as I soar in the championship ski jump. Ta -da! Lovely. You win a silver. Get the York sensation. Welcome back to the lighter side. Seems these days while everybody's rapping, the beat from the street have their toes be tapping. Put a message out so there ain't no doubt. Help and understand what this life's about. You see, rap is a tap to a deeper side. It takes a rhyming rhythm on a rockin' ride. So you see a bunch of fellas too mellow to rap. Just reach on over and give them a slap. Ooh. They just don't appreciate it, see. They just rattle when they gather too blatantly. Wear a frown, put it down, and act reluctantly. But rap is a slap on a deep eye side. It takes a rhyme and a rhythm on a rock and ride. Oh, so you see a bunch of fellas too mellow to rap. Just reach on over and give them a slap. Word. The lighter side has seen some wild interviews with some great guests. We chatted with Spuds McKenzie, who spoke through interpreters. With Rachel Hunter, who was partial to sign language. How many they use? No. How many they use? You, you, <laughs> that many. That many. He understands it. That's the problem. Glenn knows how many that is. And with daredevil skier Glenn Blake. As far as people are concerned, it'd probably be skiing naked. And <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Let's not forget our own Jim Valvano, who spoke a language all his own. As my Thank mother you. said, Thank as you. my mother says, je veux peu pas poupon moustard champagne. <laughs> she always says that. What does that mean? Let's get out of here. That's what she said. <laughs> Hit it. Several of our guests had interesting things to say about their competitive natures. Folks, as you actually went recruiting at a time most folks don't think about it, right? We got married in uh, Long Island, and uh -huh. we went to the Americana, which is now to Sheridan yes, in Manhattan. Yes, yes. I had my wife in my arms, carrying her over the threshold, so to speak, and the phone rings. <laughs> I said to my wife, I can't believe that your mom would call us so soon. <laughs> so I, I drop her on the bed. And I <laughs> say, her I dropped bed. gently. All I right, say, hello, good. Mom. They have to remember, it, it was different times. This is yeah. 13, 14 years ago. Uh -huh. It's not like it is today where you have trial and error before you get married. I was very anxious <laughs> for this moment. <laughs> Let's go to this. Finish this story here. That's a guy. So when I, I picked up the phone, uh, the other voice says, hello, Rick. This is Jim Beheim. And that whining voice. Says, yeah. And worried, worried. He said, Jim Beheim? He said, Rick, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I said, Jim, this is my honeymoon night. <laughs> And he said, I must speak to you. And I said, okay, I'm coming back from San Francisco in about a week, we'll get together. He said, no, I need to interview you tonight for a potential assistant coach's job, and I have to do it right now. I'm at LaGuardia on my way in. And I interviewed <laughs> him for about three hours, yeah. came up and took the job. I went on to recruit Lewis Orr in Cincinnati, and she went up to Syracuse. Right the then? Next you morning. just went out to recruit? Next morning, I got on a plane, recruited wow. Lewis Orr. Fortunately, that, we got him. Now, that is dedication. That is unbelievable. I'm on my fourth wife. <laughs> <laughs> And on the subject of rising to the occasion, here's superstar jockey Julie Crone. Uh -huh. I heard you're also a pretty good boxer. No, I used a chair. <laughs> Wait a second. Let <laughs> me backtrack. I didn't fight with that guy. I hit him with a chair. You hit him with a chair? Tell yeah. us about it. What happened? Why'd you hit him with a chair? He oh. bashes me across the face with his whip pulling up. I win the race by many lengths. I'm not even close. And he smacked you with the whip. Right, and I'm galloping back from my horse, and I thought I was sweating, you know, because you work really hard. Yeah. <laughs> and I go like this, and it's blood. And you know how in the cowboy movies where the cowboys, bam, they get oh, hit, yeah. and they lay down, and they go like this, and then they get, like, furious oh. when they see blood? That's what I did. And just went crazy. Right, and we got back, and we ended up in the swimming pool somehow, and he was, like, trying to drown me. And I swam out <laughs> of the pool first. And when I got out, I hit him with the lawn chair. <laughs> I, I, I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Speaking of rivalries, Tommy Heinsohn talked about a dispute he had with a Celtic teammate. They would make sure I was late for practice so that I'd always end up getting fined by Red Auerbach, which was... <laughs> and Frank Ramsey would stand Not there and he'd Frank. go, Red, Red, he's five minutes late. That's $25. You gotta find him $25. So we had a whole campaign going on, and I decided I was going to get even with him. Frank was a very meticulous dresser, and he was a, uh, he's an astute businessman. He used yeah. to go leave practice and go down to the financial district, and he would always be dolled up with a suit, button-down collar, and a shirt. What I did was, after practice, I would end up, and I would cut off three-quarters of the way through one of these buttons on his button-down shirt, and it would fall off. And I did that for a week to get even with him. And then I would cut his shoelaces three quarters of the way through so that he pulled oh, his shoe no. and he snapped his shoelaces. <laughs> and then, to re he wasn't getting a message, you know, and he kept going, Red, Red, he's five minutes late, that's $25. <laughs> and finally, I, I, he was an avid reader. We'd go on planes and he'd fall asleep and I'd cut out the last <laughs> chapter of his book. <laughs> and he finally got wise, you know. On almost every episode, we show some footage of our guests in action. And this is some of the best action we found. The scenes are from the movie The Blizzard of Oz. And the action is courtesy of lighter side guest Glenn Flake. So pull off your powder pants, strap yourself in, and follow that mohawk. Yeah, for this
women are finally being taken seriously in the business world. And that's why Entrepreneurial Woman was created, for women who are in business. Today we're going to take a short trip out of the neighborhood and go down to the rodeo corral. You can say Yahoo, can't you? Sure you can. This is called steer wrestling, although rodeo folks sometimes call it wrestling. This is the saddle bronco contest. They make these nice horses jump up and down by whispering alto in their ears over and over again. As you can see, the cowboys love their horses so much that they don't want to let go of them. Isn't that beautiful? Let's watch more. Doesn't this look like fun? The flaps of leather on the cowboy's legs are called chaps, and all cowboys wear them. After a day of rodeo, many cowboys wear foam collars on their necks. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? This is the best of fan follies. In this segment, Bernard King took on Jim Valvano in a shootout at the letter side corral. That one was good. Okay, and then go, Jim now. had his chance. Ready, Ben? Now, I, my cue, Ben. And my cue. Ready? Go ahead, go. There's one. Go. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Two, two. Three. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Four. Get your shoelaces. Get your shoelaces. Come on, come on, come on. Get your come shoelaces. Come on, get up on. Get up on. Get up on. Five. Come on, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have a, 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 We also went out to the beach for the time trials of a new Olympic event, the lighter side bat spin and obstacle course. Each contestant spins five times, negotiates the course, and tries to sink as many baskets as possible. And here's what happened. Go! Oh, this is going to be a competitive one. This, these are some great bat spinners. Great bat spinners here. Uh oh. Oh no. He missed the, the bat. We're kind of. Get the doctors. Get the doctors. We're a little bit. We're a little dizzy. One. We got one already. Oh yes. Oh my goodness. He hit the tower. One one. Yes, you got the score here. Time. The winner. Right here, is he not? He's right here, the gentleman. Right here. Along with superstar sports writer Frank DeFord, Jim hosted a sports terminology quiz called Name That Game. Six-pack will get roofed before you can paddle someone. What sport are you playing? Basketball. No. Uh, what are you doing? Rugby. No, you're on the beach with a six-pack. It's volleyball. Go ahead, next. In what sport do drafts occur while the event is in process? In <laughs> what is that? You're done. If you, if you execute an option and gain two Football. points. No. On a late rally, where are you? You're in a stock market, that's it, man. Go ahead. In what sport would an athlete grab a board and head for the breakers? Basketball. No. Surfing. You Surfing. got it. All right. Yes. All right, he's got one. Yes. Please, take your head off. No, I'm a thinking cap. Oh, go on. Thinking cap. Leave it on. And, and, and as they say, the last question. The last question. Here it is. <laughs> If the fullback intercepts and passes to the halfback, what kind of a ball is he using? Rugby. Football. <laughs> Soccer. 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 Yes. And there it is. And our winner is. Who's kept? And our winner is. And our winner, and our winner is right here. He won it. Great job. Here's the book. Good hands. What happens in what sport when they throw the book? Here's your catch it. The lighter. The Philadelphia Eagles are a rumbling, brawling, rough, tough bunch of guys. But they're no tougher on the field than their coach buddy Ryan is off the field with the press. Take a look at this. Why do you always remember the defensive players, not the offensive players? I remember who it was, dumbass. Rush, rush. Hey, he's, he's got a bolo punch. He's, he's winding up his engines there. 
engine one, engine two, engine three. Well, I'll tell you, it's, you know. That's cool, but, but, here he hey, comes. McDonald, you know, he's just sitting back waiting on this guy to settle down. Uh -oh. Oh, McDonald, man. oh! Matter can't believe it. Oh. You know, it's a funny thing when you get dazed. You don't believe that you're dazed until you get yourself up and you... Hey, come here. Closer. Don't see any dandruff, do you? Used to have it. Boy, did I ever. So I tried Head and Shoulders. Then I tried my husband's Seltzen Blue. He was right. Blue is better. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. Test shows Selsun Blue relieves dandruff flecking better than head and shoulders. And doctors recommend it number one. More than head and shoulders, Denerex, and Tegrin combined. For me, there's no doubt about it. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. Normal, extra medicated, and extra conditioning formulas. When I played football, I crunched quarterbacks. But now I crunch these. JB's Pigskins. The new pork rind still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. When I bite into a York peppermint patty, brrr, I get the sensation of cold, crisp mountain air as I soar in the championship ski jump. Ta -da! Lovely. You win a silver. Get the York brrr, sensation. Hey, yeah, yo, it's time to shake your bomb-bombs, everybody, because guess what? It's pro football blooper time. These guys over here are anything but cool. Yo. Some time ago on national TV, Dick Vitale said he was better looking than Coach Bill Frieder. Can't handle him. There's no way in the world. That's a no contest. That's like comparing my looks with Bill Frieder. He's the only guy in basketball I'm better looking at. Well, Jim wanted to keep things fair, so he asked Bill Frieder for his opinion. That's good. Now listen, Bill. We're giving you a chance to respond to Dick Vitale, who quite frankly maintains he is better looking than you are. What do you say? You got a whole bunch of folks here. Jimmy, can you believe he even had the guts to say that? <laughs> huh? The man has no hair, right? And that's it. None he's that I can find. He's overweight. Yep. Right? He's, yep. I mean, he's over the hill, isn't he? That's right. And then we asked you to decide. And in a seesaw battle that was audited by the accounting firm of Bosky, Baker, Pinochet, and Pierce, the American public voted Bill Frieder the better looking of the two. We asked Bill if he harbored any bad feelings for Dick. Don't tell anybody, but you know, I've interviewed with Enberg and Musburger and Keith Jackson, all of them, and the guy's got bad breath on top of him. <laughs> and then we asked Dick for his reaction to the results. Unbelievable! Stay tuned for the next Lighter Side referendum, when we let you decide who has the best manners in basketball. Many of our favorite sports figures have hidden talents. Take Cleveland Browns receiver Webster Slaughter, who besides being a great football player and stylish dresser, is an all-star poet. Webster did a little recital for us, and here it is. Children all across the land. I'm here to talk about how drugs can take command. Now, I'm not talking about myself or necessarily you. I'm just passing information on what drugs can do. Don't put drugs into your body. 
because they mess with your mind. And if you are taking drugs, you're wasting your time. One day you'll find out and you'll agree with me. That drugs couldn't turn you out the way you wanted to be. Your life is tore down, all your friends are gone. Sometimes you lose the cozy place that you used to call home. If you ever approach to make a drug deal, keep fresh in your mind. That drug can kill and they will. I've seen it all before. See, first you try a little bit and then you're begging for more. You get your buy the prize and now they're in control. You may feel like you're living in a deep dark hole. Now they never walk in. You forget the names. Got people walking around staring as if you were in a depression and oh so weak. And all your hard earned money's gone because of the drugs you see. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. You're living day by day. When there's a will to have drugs, then you find it. You start stealing from your family, stealing from your friends. You have no disregard for the other man. Stop shooting me up from crack and popping the pills. Keep fresh in your mind. That drugs can kill and they will. This is not a lie. My best advice to you would be never give drugs. Some of people get addicted when they don't want to. And some become a kid. All at one thing. It was sad to lose bias, rogers, and cruders. So before you do drugs, think, why should I do this? I have nothing to gain and everything to lose. But the decision is yours, it's up to you to change. You can buy this with a visa or a master charge, but nothing good comes that easy. Your must work hard for everybody out there. Listen up real close. I want my message to be heard from coast to coast. They think I'm from the Cleveland Browns and I am not here. I'm just here to let you know that drugs ain't kill. Be right back. Game with Webster Sorter, and that's a fact. Good day, get a rap master. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, Webster Sorter. And now it's time for the best of the home video corner. This scene is from the movie Naked Gun, now available on home video. Leslie Nielsen is a policeman posing as an umpire to try and find a killer who may be disguised as a ball player. By the way, the batter is former lighter side host, the one and only Jay Johnstone. Lighter Side of Sports has been brought to you by the Heartbeat of America. Today is Chevrolet. When I played football, I crunched quarterback. Best of the Blooper Awards. This pitcher wins our Balk of the Decade Award. What a great thing. Not to be outbought, it's the chicken. This is the winner of our wonderful Water Skier of the Week Award. Whoops. Uh-oh. Wrong tape. For this backyard banger, we give our Keep Your Eye on the Ball Award. Take a look at his swing. Four. Now, watch his reaction. He can't believe it either. We could also call this our What Not To Do With Dad's New Camera Award. From the world of track, the runner in lane five near the top of the screen wins the Funny Finish Award. Now that is a funny finish. And our Happy Landing Award goes to this young rider. 
From England, we bring you footage of the newest official Olympic event. It's called the Vegetable Stakes. And the object is simple. Hunt down your favorite vegetables and cut them down in cold juice. The first team to fill the pot wins. The fans really seem to like it. This week's Animal Achievement Award goes to this high flyer. Finally, the one and only Sultan of the Superlative, Mr. Don King, wins our Tommy Faye Baker Sincerity with the Media Award. And I certainly will be talking about what a great television man you are. And you are, really. This, that goes without saying. Not only you have to be one of you well with this fight, but your record speaks for itself, and you've been fantastic. I think if you knew who I was, how much you'd say. Oh, yes, that would be even greater. And that's it for this week's Blooper Achievement Awards. As the sun sets over this episode of The Lighter Side, we'd like to show you some game footage from HBO's video, The Making of the Sports Illustrated Swimwear Edition, starring Lighter Side guest Rachel Hunter and several of her well-conditioned teammates. So let's sit back and watch the credits roll in. We hope you enjoyed the show.